symptoms of trauma, hyperarousal, constriction, disassociation, or denial, hypervigilance, intrusive imagery, or flashback, nightmares and night terrors, abrupt mood swings, temper tantrums, frequent anger or crying, panic attacks, anxiety and phobias, depression and feelings of impending doom, shame and lack of self-worth, inability to love, nurture, or bond with other individuals. And last but not least, reenactment of the trauma. Trauma doesn't know a color, trauma doesn't know an age, trauma doesn't know a tax bracket, trauma doesn't know any of these things. Anybody can be traumatized in anybody. So does that sound familiar? Interesting to find out what your symptoms of trauma are, aren't they? Yes, that's not who you are. But it's a symptom of being traumatized. And we're here to heal each other. Isolation. Inability to love. Addictive behavior. Insomnia. Depression. Hypervigilance. Avoidance. Shame. Addictive behavior. Shame. Panic attacks. Depression. Isolation. Shame. Inability to be loved. Depressing. You needed the support when you were a little boy. You needed to be seen, you needed to be held, you needed to be loved. And what happened was your mom and your dad, they just couldn't do it. And there's no shame. There's no shame in what they did because they were doing the best that they could. I've been coming to jail since the age of 12. And since the age of 13, I haven't been out in the streets for more than three months. All my brothers have been to prison. Three of us are lifers. I dealt with a lot of trauma growing up. And it was difficult and it still is to this day. And when I came to this yard, I didn't expect it to be any different than from every other yard that I've been to in the state of California. Violence. Boundaries between races. I came here, I didn't see any of that. I saw an entirely different atmosphere. And the people around me, everybody was different. They treated you with a different kind of attitude, a different kind of respect. In one of our classes, we were talking about the effects of slavery on our behavior. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I ain't agree with it when I first heard it. But then when he talked about the discipline, I had a flashback of how I used to get whipped with a bull whip, naked. I didn't put the two or two together, but I realized, you know, that's how slaves was whipped because it was generational trauma passed on from one mother to another mother to another mother, and it passed on to me. I still got marks on my legs and stuff behind that. And I just remembered there was no one I could run to, no one could help me. And she just was telling me how much she loved me as she cried and she beat me with a bull whip. But I was thankful today for the opportunity to forgive myself, to forgive her, and forgive all those people who would traumatize her. I lost my father. I never got a chance to meet my father until I met him in prison because my uncles believed that he wasn't a man because he was gay. My mother was on drugs. My sister was sexually molested by my stepfather, and my mother blamed me for that. And I walked with that anger. And then I got among these men, every man on this yard. And a lot of brothers took a lot of time out with me, from education to self-help groups to church. And I decided to change. It wasn't no easy task. So for a lot of guys that walk up to me and I walk up to them and hug them, cause I didn't get them hugged. And I show y'all that love because y'all showed me that love. 31 years, I walked up in there and I got found suitable to go home. 
I love y'all, man. Thank you so much. Beautiful. So one more time, y'all. There is no shame. There is no shame. I can't hear y'all. There is no shame. There is no shame. Through the mist and the pain, I've learned to maintain. There is no shame. Through the midst of the pain, I've learned to maintain. There is no shame. There is no shame. There is no shame. Through the midst of the pain, I've learned to maintain. There is no shame. You are just incredible men that got the wrong hand this lifetime. And it's going to change now. And I can tell by what you've said and what you're doing that the future is is bright. None of us in here were born evil and that many men turn and women turn to criminal behavior as a result of not knowing how to process their emotions or what they're dealing with. And so the more that we do this work that Fritzy and the Compassion Prison Project is bringing to us, the more we better understand that we were not born bad people and we're able to heal ourselves. So we will look forward to working with you all, Governor Gavin Newsom, Dr. Robert Andrew, Dr. Felitti, Surgeon General Nadine Burke Harris. Help us. We need your help. Getting the word out and helping the people heal. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Fritzi Horseman, founder of the Compassion Prison Project. Thank you so much for watching our most recent promo. We are asking for donations so that we can continue our urgent and important work, educating the public about the devastating effects of childhood trauma and bringing this awareness to the men, women, and children living in prison. We are also asking that you visit our website and take the Adverse Childhood Experiences Survey, also known as the ACEs Survey, and learn about what trauma does to the brain, body, and spirit. Please share the ACEs survey with your friends, family, community members, and coworkers so we can bring this conversation onto the global stage. Together we can shift this paradigm in how we incarcerate, isolate, and dehumanize the most traumatized members of our society. Thank you for your compassion, and thank you again for watching. <laughs>